What's up guys, Klee here with another video to help you grow your future and your faith. And today we are digging into six reasons why I believe in God. There are actually more reasons that I left out or that I probably just didn't think of at the time, but these are the top six. Have you ever gotten an argument or a heated debate with one of your friends? Like why SpongeBob is actually educational programming? Educational television! Oh, no! Or why LeBron is actually the GOAT? Or how you know Carol Bastin's killed her dang husband? If not, I have. Countless others have. Except for the except for the LeBron thing, like we all know Jordan's the GOAT. Well, I know Jordan's the GOAT, but some people will make that argument that LeBron's the GOAT. We're not getting into that on this. It's not a sports channel. But whenever that happens, you are confident in your claim because you have knowledge about the topic and you have evidence to support your claim. But what if somehow, I thought about this, what if somehow the topic fell on God? Whether God was real and whether we should believe in him or not. Would you have the same energy that you have for Tiger King or LeBron or MJ or SpongeBob when it came to saying God is real? or why you believe in God. I had to ask this question to myself. And when I first asked this question to myself, to be quite honest, the answer was no. Like, I did not think I would have the same type of confidence in my stance if this topic were talking about whether God was real or why I believe in God. This actually did not settle with me well at all. Like, how can I be a Christian and not be able to firmly explain why I believe in God? Like, that's pretty much basic level. Like, that should be grade kindergarten of Christianity. You got to believe he exists and know why. But I feel like this is the case for a lot of Christians, especially ones that might have been raised in the church when it comes to clearly articulating why we believe in God, why we believe God is real might start tripping up over ourselves. Now, I am specifically speaking for myself in this video, but I wanted to get to the bottom of this. Disclaimer, <laughs> these are my opinions, okay? Your reasons for believing might be different than mine or they might be in addition to mine or whatever it is. You might disagree with me. You might not even believe in God at all and you're watching this video, but these are just my opinions and I'm sure whatever your opinions are, are legitimate, but I just want to express and probably help someone that might not believe or might need additional evidence to their claim of why they believe in God. And hopefully this video is helpful for to you. But these are my opinions. If you disagree or agree, hey, leave it in the comments. I would love to hear from you because I have an open mind. Number one, the Bible. I don't care who you are, whether you believe in the Bible or you don't believe in the Bible. You got to respect that book. Like that book is it's amazing like <laughs> the bible is a long book written from multiple authors over thousands of years and it consistently all points back to the same alpha character of god that is amazing it's incredible like that is really the goat of all books that's the greatest book of all time because how does that even happen each person throughout the history of time writing about the same person with the same consistent characteristics like that's not a coincidence that's an amazing feat that is a god ordained feat like you have to believe that god exists from reading that book it's incredible reason number two god's consistency no matter what throughout the history of time from when the earth first came into existence to even now god has been consistent in his love for his creation and his disdain for sin that is the thread throughout all time. You can argue here or there how God behaves, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament, but that has been consistent. God's love for humanity, God's love for his creation, and God's disdain for sin and how it's ruined our world. Point number three, prophecy. Prophecy just means the prediction of something to come. There are a number of prophets throughout history, but a few are really pointed out for their amazing gift of prophecy given to them by God. Some of those are Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, John. All these people had the gift of prophecy. That means they were able to predict what was coming in the future, and it actually came to pass. Isaiah and Jeremiah predicted the Messiah coming. They, predict, they predicted Jesus coming to earth and becoming king. 
they predicted Jesus Christ's death and how he was going to die as well. Now, of course, people throughout the time reading the Old Testament scriptures kind of misinterpreted what they what Isaiah and Jeremiah meant by a Messiah, not saying that he was going to be the king of Jerusalem or king of the Jews, but that he was going to be the king of all kings in heaven. The book of Daniel was incredible. It has lots of prophecy in it, and it pretty much predicted the whole development of the Western world. And we all know that America wasn't discovered until the 15th century. And also, John in the book of Revelation is still revealing things to this day, predicting the return of the power of the papacy and, and Rome and the emergence, the emergence of another world power, which was the United States. All are in biblical prophecy, and all these things have come true consistently without flaw. I would dig some more into this in another video, but it all proves to me that God is real and God divinely ordained these people with the gift of prophecy. Reason number four is because you're enjoying this video, you'll hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, seriously, but number four is the universe. I don't care who you are, how educated you are, how many degrees you have, you cannot tell me that the universe, the galaxy, the ecosystem, all working in perfect harmony was created by some type of cosmic accident. It takes just as much faith for me to believe in some alleged cosmic boom that happened 13.7 billion years ago and created everything that we know today than for me to believe in the creator that orchestrated the earth, who in my opinion is just as consistent as science. Now here's the thing, I do believe in science. But I define science as the continuous discovery and explanation for what God had already orchestrated from the beginning. We're just discovering it now for ourselves. Science is real, science is cool, but science is the discovery of God. And we have taken that and misconstrued it and turned it into something that is completely absent of God. And that's where I think we start to go wrong with scientific research. Reason number five, humans were obviously designed to worship. All the science in the world has not discovered the ploy of the human soul. Humans were designed to worship. We have to devote ourselves to something, anything, whether it's our job, money, business, women, men, cars, power, whatever it is. We have to worship something. It is innately built within us. But the thing is, countless people have acquired all of these things, unlimited amounts of anything you could ever desire and still feel unfulfilled and unhappy in life. And that's because God designed us to worship, but he designed us to worship him. That space, that human soul void that is empty can only be filled by worshiping the one who created us. And that's God. All right, here's reason number six. And I know I'm probably gonna get flack for this reason, but I said in the video, I said in the beginning of the video, this is my opinion. And if this could help somebody, I know that I did my job. Reason number six is why not? Why not believe in God? What do you have to lose from believing in God? Really? You can live a decent life whether you believe in God or not. But this is just my thinking about it. Like if heaven is real, then you made it. You lived a God-centered life. If it's not real, no harm, no foul. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. is. Here's the thing. Life is not better without God. No matter how much you gain on earth. And we see this time and time again on all these ID stories where people are murdering people for money and people are kill themselves or overdose on drugs or whatever when they're filthy rich and have everything in the world because no matter how much you gain here on earth life is just not better and i'm not saying this from a poor man's stance i'm saying this from experience when you pursue your desires things don't go right when you pursue god's desires for you things get right and that doesn't mean everything works out that doesn't mean life is perfect struggles hardships happen to everybody but it's that peace and understanding of God and what he means that gets us through it. So why not believe in God? Life's not better without him, so why not go with him? Why gamble eternal life for a quick high here on earth? And if you were wrong about God, what's the worst that could happen? But I trust you, once you believe in him and see how gracious, how forgiving, how loving he is, you'll have no doubt in your mind. So why or why not do you believe in God? Comment down below. I would love to hear from you. I release videos every Wednesday that help you grow your future and your faith. So if you like that type of content, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified every Wednesday when I release a new episode and you won't miss it. All right, guys, talk to you in the next one. Peace.